Every construction operation must be under the supervision of a designated competent person. Remember that a competent person is somebody who has the ability to recognize hazards and has the authority to correct them. Everyone on site should know who the competent person is. Soil must be analyzed and classified by a competent person. Soil classification will be used for designing appropriate sloping or benching systems or in the selection of protective systems. There are four classifications of soil. The first one is solid rock. Excavations in solid rock can be made with vertical sides with no protection systems. It is very rare to find this type of soil and it's usually only found in quarries. Type A soil is strong, cohesive soil. Cohesive soil is usually clay or soil with a large amount of clay content that has cohesive strength. Cohesive soil does not crumble, it can be excavated with vertical side slopes, and it is plastic when wet. Cohesive soil is hard to break up when dry. It also exhibits significant cohesion when submerged. If the soil is not cohesive, it cannot be type A soil. In addition, soil cannot be type A soil if it is fissured or broken, if it is subject to vibration of nearby traffic or equipment, it is previously disturbed, or there are any other factors that may affect stability. Type B soil is any soil that would be considered to be type A soil, except it is fissured, previously disturbed, or subject to vibration. Granular cohesionless soils, such as angular gravel, silt, and types of loam can be considered type B soils. Type C soils are granular soils, such as gravel and sand. Submerged soil, or soil that is seeping water, is also a type C soil. When classifying soil, it must be classified with at least one visual test and one physical test. A visual test involves inspecting the soil for fissures, cracks, cohesiveness, signs of previous disturbance, soil layering, wetness, and sources of vibration. There are many different types of physical or manual tests. The plasticity test involves rolling a moist sample into a ball and then rolling it into a thread of about one eighth of an inch in diameter. If you can do this and it holds its shape, it is a cohesive soil. The dry strength test involves seeing if it will crumble on its own or with moderate pressure applied. If it breaks apart, it is a granular soil. The thumb penetration test involves pressing your thumb into a sample of the soil. Type A soils can only be penetrated with a lot of effort. You can also use other tests, such as the pocket penetrometer. The competent person performing soil classification should refer to 29 CFR 1926 subpart P, Excavations, Appendix A, for more information. Now I've often found that if you have three people in a room, you'll get five opinions. This often goes for soil classification as well. The hip cool thing in safety right now is just to assume that all soils are type C soils and then proceed with that assumption. It eliminates all the guesswork. The OSHA compliance officers that I worked with had a lot of interesting stories about soil classification. They frequently come across sites where the soil has been inappropriately classified as type A. The biggest issue they usually had was nearby vibration. If there's traffic or heavy equipment in use in the area, there's vibration and it can't be type A soil. They also saw previously disturbed soil frequently classified as type A, and they frequently take issue with layered soils. That occurs when there are two different types of soil in the excavation. That can be pretty common. In that case, you need to proceed with the lowest classification of soil, 